What follows is a video I made in July of 2018, back when we were all living in a world in which we wondered day to day what travesty, idiocy, or crime the then orange idiot president would be carrying out on any given day. This video was made more than three years ago when I was yet to develop better video making skills, so it isn't going to look as sharp or sound as clear as my more current efforts, but I still think it gets the message across fairly well. It is about Pluto, a planet that was discovered now almost 100 years ago and though subsequently demoted from the astronomical array in 2005, well, let's just say that astronomically you can do that, but astrologically you can't demote anything, and probably Pluto least of all. This is a planet that can have a very bad reputation, being the lord of the underworld and thus associated with death, but as I believe I mentioned in a recent video, short of the final actual death, we experience several deaths within our lifetime by way of periods during which we change in hugely significant ways, leaving behind the self that no longer serves us and instead incarnating a stronger and more effective way of being that brings us better results and increased happiness. And in this respect, Pluto can also signify important changes in the political world, changes for the better, and for this, I believe we have to thank Pluto for helping us get rid of the malevolent orange menace since one major reason he was bounced out of the White House in November of 2020 was transiting Pluto in opposition to his natal Saturn-Venus conjunction, signifying that his time was up and he needed to vacate the White House. And no, I will say this again, he isn't coming back to live there again. Not gonna happen. In the meantime, here's the 2018 video in which I explain why Pluto was named Pluto, which may seem like a simple thing and or just a rather simple coincidence, but if you think about it, the synchronicity is quite profound since Pluto behaves exactly as Pluto would be expected to behave. And yet it might have been called something entirely different. So in effect, this is a demonstration of massive synchronicity in action. Here we have a story about the planet Pluto, ruler of great change and transformation, among many other things. And this planet was discovered February 18th, 1930, by American astronomer Clyde Tombo. And at the time, there was some argument about what to name the planet. And as it turns out, a fellow by the name of Falconer Madden, who had connections to the astronomical community, asked his granddaughter, Venetia Burney, what she thought they should name the planet. And the reason is, Venetia had an interest in um, mythology, and Venetia thought they should name it Pluto because it's very far away and uh, very solitary and so on. And so Falconer made the suggestion to the powers that be and after some argument and some rejection of other names such as for example Minerva, names that had been taken up by other asteroids, finally May 1st 1930 Pluto was in fact named Pluto. Now what is interesting is if we look at Venetia's chart we see that um, without a time, because no time is known, she has Pluto in the same sign as her sun, about 12 and a half degrees away, which is just enough to prevent what is known as combustion. Planets that are too close to the sun uh, become harmed by the sun in terms of their strength. Uh, you could argue that this might still be considered combust, but I would consider it far enough away that it's probably okay. However, we don't know where it is in terms of rising, setting, culminating, so there's no way to know about other strengths for this planet. We do know, however, that it's in her sun sign, and we know that at the time of birth they're separated by those degrees, but then we look at the ephemeris and we see that around the time of her suggestion, Pluto had reached the degrees of conjunction to her sun. Here it looks like it's a little bit before, but already prior to this it had reached the degrees. So effectively it was, a, it was a conjunction. So Pluto had gotten to the Sun. This is one of those delightful coincidences that you see in astrology, and it's in fact the great power of astrology, the great meaning that such things can actually happen. Now, going forward, uh, 
although she became um, an accountant, mathematician, economist, teacher, this was her claim to fame, her connection to Pluto. She died in 2009 when Pluto had reached uh, the beginning degrees of Capricorn, which put it almost opposite to its initial position. This is something that happens quite a bit to people in the 20th century because Pluto normally travels in a 250-year orbit, and so you would think it would take 125 years to reach the opposition, but many people uh, have this opposition in their, in their 90s, and Pluto being uh, a tremendous change agent, that is often a point when a person at that age will die um, because, because of Pluto's connections to great change and transformation, and that's in fact what happened to her. So there you have it. Uh, this is uh, a really interesting uh, anecdote about Pluto.